Hello everyone, this is Kelly and I'd like to welcome you back with Day 3's products of the Sealed with Love release available at honeybeestamps.com on December the 15th. Now first up today I have the Antique Layering Roses Stamps and Coordinating Dies. You can see the stamp set there and then those coordinating dies. Now in your package you'll find a layering guide for this stamp set. So you can see you can pick out the images on the layering guide and they're all labeled there. So it's easy to pick those out on your stamp set following the layering guide. There's also some for the leaves. And there's also some lined images in this set. So you can use the layering images by themselves or you can use the outline design either to add some interest or some darker colors back into that layered rose, or you could use those outline designs to stamp and then use your colored pencils or your Copic markers. So you can see all the beautiful layers there of those roses. So there's a large rose, a smaller bud, and then some leaves. Now here's the coordinating die set. You can see there is the larger rose, the bud and stem, and the leaves. Now let's take a look at some design team inspiration. Here Carol has used all the layers. So you can see that outlined design there in the dark pink. And then she's used all the layers for those roses to create this beautiful bouquet cluster. Next is a beautiful card from design team member Becky, and she's used just the layers. You can see that there's no outline there around those images, and she stamped out several of these and several of the leaves added to her card with always and forever. Now next up is our lovely layers rose dies. So you can see there are lots of dies in the set, and they come together to create the most beautiful lovely layered rose along with a little bud. So I'm going to create a card with this at the end of the video, so I hope you'll stick around for that. But I wanted you to see this beautiful card from design team member Becky. She has put together that lovely layered rose. She's done an ink blended and splattered background and paired the rose with the U buzzword and are the best. Now this is the Lace A2 cover plate die. I love this design. You can see those cut lines all throughout the design. There's also lots of embossing added into this cover plate. So first off, you have a frame for the cover plate and then there's an inset. Now there's also coordinating stencils. As I pull these out of the package, I'm gonna spread these apart so you can see them. But the stencils have etched lines, so it's easy to line that up with your die cuts. And then you can blend on color for the little roses that are included in that design, the leaves, the little scallops around the edge, and then the center as well. So there's lots of different ways and options that you can use the dies with the stencil. So I'm going to show you a few of the options. So first off, that inset comes out, or you could nestle it together to have a really lacy design. So first off, you could take the inset out and just have the frame. So this adds the perfect little lacy design around the edges. You could add some images or a sentiment to the inside of that. If you take a close up look, you can see all of the cut design as well as the beautiful embossing that that plate leaves. Now you could also use the inset into that and have an all over lacy design. You can see how the middle cuts out there. And then you could also use the stencils with that. So there's the little roses, the leaves, the inside roses, the outside scallops, and then the inside leaves. They're super easy to line up because there are etched lines around the edges and then around the inset in the center. Another fun way to use that die is with partial die cutting. That's just where you line up the plates on your die machine to cut out certain portions of that die image. 
So you can see I have lined up my plates just to cut the edge and it's just a fun way to add a lacy edge to the side of your card. Now here Brenda has used that cover plate. She's not used the center inset, but she's paired that with the stencils to add some glitter paste and ink around the design on the outside. And here Becky has only used the inset You'll see that beautiful design there in the center and then she's paired that with our lovely layered rose. Now this is the delicate doily die and it's coordinating stencil so you can see that beautiful die it's going to cut around the edge and then also give you this great really fun embossed design and then there is the coordinating stencil so you can cut that out and lay the stencil over the top or you can stencil first and then cut it out with your die. It's another option to add fun color onto all those little areas of the embossed design. Now I have several of these cut and made to show you what they look like. So first off, I wanna show you this just in white paper. So when it is cut, you can see how it cuts around the edge and then leaves all that great embossed area. It almost looks like stained glass. And then here is a pale pink cardstock, just a different option there. And you can really see those great embossed lines. Now this sample, I have used the die and the stencil. You can see how it leaves those white areas there from the stencil and I just did a rainbow design. And then for this one, I did a card base and only used the stencil and put glitter paste over the top of that. So here Mari has used that die and the stencil to create this beautiful blue card along with the lovely layers rose. And then also Ilda has done a fun shaker card. She's used that doily die, she's cut out the center and then made that a little shaker window and then of course added her lovely layers rose. Now here is a look at the details for that lovely layers rose. And this will be found on our website. Just search for the lovely layers layered rose and this will pull up as an easy guide for you. But I'm going to create the rose and layer it all together to show you and then create a card with the rose that I made. So I'm starting out with the largest or the base bottom piece of that rose. These are super easy to line up. All you have to do is find the little point on the bottom left hand side and I kind of use that as uh, my little guide point to line everything up. So I'm adding our Be Creative liquid glue only to the bottom portion of these roses because when I'm finished I want to kind of pull those layers apart towards the top and get a little more dimension. So I'm just working my lay, way along each layer and I've used three different kinds of cardstock to kind of give my rose a little bit of dimension and color variation there. And again, I'm just using that point towards the bottom left to line everything up. And you can see I kind of squeeze around the edges to make sure all my layers are nicely added and that they line up nicely. I'm going to add the final little bottom layer there of the those open petals and then I can squeeze the bottom and then pull apart all those layers and you can see the great dimension that you get there. So once I get that together I'm going to start working on this beautiful stem and leaves portion. I've started with the base layer you can see that long stem with the leaves there and then adding the leaves to the top. So that's where the bud of that open rose has opened up and those little green leaves that hold all everything together have kind of opened up and fallen away from the bloom. They're really easy to match up. You just use the different shapes. And then I love that you can cut this in different colors of cardstock. So you're really getting the look of a rose. So you can see all of that together now. Next I'm going to add the leaves onto the base part and I'm adding glue only towards what would be the base of the leaf. That way again I can kind of pull up the tips and add a little bit more dimension. 
I'm getting all those kind of moved around with the liquid adhesive. Liquid adhesive is great to use on these because it gives you the time to kind of move and shimmy everything around to get it perfectly lined up. Next, I'm moving around to the little tiny bud. It is so cute. There is a base layer to it as well. So I'm going to add the two layers of pink there on top of the little bud stem. And then I'm adding again the little leaf portion or the little green portions that open up to allow that bud to kind of come out there. And I'm using the embossed line in that little leaf to kind of pull it open and give it a little more dimension. The next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of liquid adhesive to the top of that stem piece and then press on the big open bloom. And then these are all ready to go on to my card. Before I start the card portion, I'm just going to hold these up so you can see all the detail, the embossed lines and those leaves. And I love that little bud. Okay, now I'm going to jump in to making a card with today's products. So I pulled out our Tag Your It dies that was released with our uh, holiday release. And then I'm going to use some pattern paper from our brand new Hugs and Kisses paper pad. And I chose the paper that has the little black polka dots with the little hearts scattered inside. And you can see I have used the card base that I did that um, partial die cutting on. So I only have that lace A2 cover plate cut on the side of my card. So you can see right through into the inside of the card. It's just a special little touch there to add. And it's super easy just to line up your die cut plates and then cut that uh, partially there on the side. If you need help with partial die cutting, all you need to do is look up. There are lots and lots of YouTube videos about partial die cutting, but you just set up your cutting plates for your die machine to only cut that part. So you only want to sandwich your die and your paper on that part of your cutting plates. Now for my little tag, I'm putting love you and I'm using our Be Creative embossing ink pad and I'm barely tapping that on and then I'm going to add white embossing paper, embossing powder to that. So I'm going to use my tweezers and sprinkle on that embossing powder and then we'll get that all heat set and ready to add to the rose on the front of my card. To add that little love you embossed tag onto my rose, I'm just using some black and white twine, but you could use ribbon or jute or whatever you would like. I'm going to tie that in a, in a bow and then clip off the ends of that. So I just need to make the loops a little smaller and then I can trim off the tails and then that's all ready to go on the front of my card base. Now I'm going to use our Be Creative liquid adhesive on the back of my rose and add that right there kind of hanging off onto that lace edge and I can kind of get everything situated before I really press that glue into place. So I used one of our Be Creative foam dots to add dimension to the leaves and then I'm going to take my Be Creative liquid adhesive, add to the back of that little tag so it stays into place. And then also add a little bit right behind the knot on the bow and also the little tails on that twine. So everything kind of stays in place and stays where you can read the little love you tag sentiment there. So once all I get all of my little tails glued down, the next thing I'm going to do is take a very tiny little foam dot and add on my tiny little bud. I saved it to last because I didn't want it to get lost in the design. So I think I'm going to poke it right there onto the left side, add a little bit of liquid adhesive to the stem. And then as I mentioned to pop that up and to make sure it's nicely held down, I'm going to take one of these Be Creative one of the tiny little foam dots, pull it out with my tweezers and add it right there behind that little bud. And it gives that a little dimension and it looks like it's just coming out from the stem. 
Now here is a look at the finished card. I love this lovely layered rose paired with the lacy design there on the edge of the card. And then of course our hugs and kisses pattern paper. Now this is it for day three of our Sealed with Love products. I hope you'll check out our blog and social media. And all of this will be available at honeybeestamps.com on December the 15th.